Hi there, and welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I can't even tell you how much it means to me that you'd take time out of your busy life to watch my first speed build in Disney Dreamlight Valley. I'm Cress, and welcome to my Fairy Glade. This garden was so fun to build. If you've seen my Instagram page, you probably already know that Fairy Core is my favorite theme. My goal is to eventually turn my entire Glade of Trust into a magical pixie paradise. But for today, I'm going to be sharing my Mushroom Manor's Fairy Garden. Don't forget to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more cozy content like this. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so yes, I didn't actually start off with a completely clear space for this build. I already had a flower garden in this spot before I tore it down, so I thought I'd be incorporating some of the old garden design elements into this new build. But as I began adding more items and some of my ideas began to take shape, I realized that I was actually going to be going in a completely different direction. One thing you should know about my decorating style is that I do not plan. I usually go into a build with a pretty general idea of what I want to create. And after a lot of trial and error and moving things around, I end up with something that's usually a lot better than what I thought I wanted to build in the beginning. So for this build, I was so inspired by the new colorful glass tub from the expansion pass that I decided I was going to build an entire garden around it. I decided that I was going to use the rocky terrain from Scrooge's store as my main path for this garden. I really like the cobblestone feel to it, and I felt like it really fit the fairy core aesthetic perfectly. And of course, I had to use the vine lamps. Like so many of you, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for this item to appear in my shop. After all, nothing screams fairy core more than a gigantic glowing flower. So I was so, so happy and grateful when we got this item as a gift from the developers, and I could not wait to use it in this build. For seating, I wanted to go with something of an eclectic, items humans abandon in the woods kind of vibe. So I added the pumpkin seat, which kind of looks like a pincushion. And since it wouldn't be a fairy garden without a little bit of pixie dust, I had to include the sparkly stone bench. I love that bench. It's one of my favorite items and I use it in most of my builds. So you may notice that I end up playing around with the placement of different types of foliage quite a bit throughout the whole course of this build. I definitely wanted it to feel lush and overgrown, but I didn't want it to feel overcrowded at the same time. I always try to fill in open space at the back of my builds with lots of trees and foliage and flowers. That way everything feels super closed in and cozy. So I use the large mossy tree and the new trellis item in this area. And then I went in and added the carriage planter from the Cinderella collection and plenty of foliage and flowers to fill in the space. I started filling in the areas around the path with different foliage items to create an overgrown look. I just love the beach grass. It's so versatile and it's beautiful and it adds so much extra dimension to a build. The ferns and butterfly flowers are also great items to fill in space because they can go on pathing, so it adds some texture to your builds as well. As soon as I crafted it, I knew I wanted to use the new tea set from the expansion pass. Originally, I thought I was going to create a cozy little nook off to the side of the flowery gazebo, as you can see here, but eventually I moved it. It just didn't feel like the right space for that. Can we take a minute to just talk about how awesome this craftable swing chair is? I love the hanging chairs from the Tangled collection, so I was so excited that now we can have hanging chairs outside. 
and the fact that it's hanging from a beautiful moss covered tree just makes it even better. I prefer to build with an idea of what it's going to look like when my character is walking through the area. But I know it's important to look at the big picture too, so a big part of my process is to pull the camera back and get a sense of my progress as a whole. This little area is where I decided to move my fairy tea party. I love that this tea set has exotic Aladdin vibes, but unfortunately that doesn't quite fit with the fairy aesthetic that I wanted. So I added the leaf rug and I felt like it changed the whole look of the item. I love that you can put this item on top of a rug. I just think that's a neat little feature. Next, I closed in this area with the new craftable trellis item. This time I used the purple flower trellis because purple is my favorite color. And because you can never have too many plants, I spent a little bit of time adding some more trees and foliage to the side by the river. I seriously love all of these new foliage items from Eternity Isle. They are so gorgeous and there's so much variety. I also love that they're only one space each on the grid, so you can really bunch them together to create a dense, wild feeling to any space that you're creating. I tried to mix up the different types of underbrush and trees I used so that it would feel more wild and untamed. Now for the transitional area. I built an outdoor fairy library as part of this build, but unfortunately my game crashed right in the middle of that and so I lost the footage. So I'll be doing a mini speed build for the library later. I thought that the fairy tale gazebo was the perfect item to use for my transitional path. I love the elegant gazebo, I use it all the time, but the flowers on the fairy tale gazebo just fit so perfectly in the garden. And of course, no build would be complete without small elements like books and flowers. I pretty much add books to all of my builds because, well, I'm a librarian and I love books. I always rotate my flowers so that when I place my flowers, it looks very natural. These luminescent flowers are seriously my favorites. I love how pretty they glow at night, and I love that they only take up one space each. Finally, I filled in my peaceful courtyard. While the swing chair is the focal point of this area, I thought that the Beauty and the Beast fountain would be a perfect item to add so that the space would feel so much more tranquil and relaxing. Originally, I was going to leave this area with just grass, but the ancient path really creates that courtyard feeling I wanted, so I ended up adding that and I just love the way it turned out. As I mentioned, I was working on an outdoor fairy library at the same time I was working on this garden. So some of the items that appear in this video were actually placed at the same time I was working on my library part. So there's a few things that you won't see me place down, but ended up at the end of the build, such as the companion house, which I put all the whimsical critters in. Um, there was an extra vine lamp that I added next to the swing chair, and then I added some luminescent flowers and some regular flowers as well. I also thought that Rapunzel's nightstand and a cup of royal tea 
was the perfect finishing touch to make my courtyard extra cozy. This game is absolutely stunning. So really all times of day are gorgeous, but sunset in the glade is its own special kind of magic. If you're still here, thank you again for joining me in this magical little corner of my valley. My channel is brand new and your support means so much to me. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm definitely going to be posting more speed builds and walkthroughs in the future. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. Thank you again and have a lovely day.